Hey everyone, Steve here from the Whoop Access Crypto Mining Store in sunny Miami, Florida. I'm here to talk to you about a new ET hash miner. Yes, I know what you're thinking. With the merger just happened, everything tanked. The market sucks. All mining profits are down or downright horrible. This bear market is taking no prisoners. But the flip side to this is to practice what we preach, buy the dip. Well, the dip is here. So even though your brain is telling you to pull out, listen to your gut and stay in the game. The time to buy is now. But remember, this is not financial advice. Please do your own research before investing in anything. All right, let's dig in. So we got this new miner from a small company named Blue Miner, and we're excited about it. Blue Miner is a new company manufacturing miners, but with a twist. Instead of your standard fan cooling, immersion product, or hydro-powered miner, they took the idea from the PC gaming industry to create a miner like no other. While your standard miner uses fans to pull the cool air in and fans to push the hot air out, making them highly inefficient, ugly, and noisy, Blue Miner is using an AIO, short for all-in-one, closed-loop liquid cooling method using deionized water to cool its chips down. Basically, in layman's terms, it's a radiator with a pump, kind of like what's in your car or your home AC. So, the pump goes on the chip and it moves the deionized water to the radiator. It has two fans in which their only purpose is to help cool down the radiator. It then moves it back to the pump, which effectively cools down the chips. Like I said, gaming PCs have been using this technology for years. So why is it better? Well, first of all, it keeps these chips running smooth. So it makes the blue miner more efficient. The miner is built into a black powder coated casing, kind of like a small PC, so it's not ugly. As for the noise, well, it's still a little bit too noisy for my taste, but it's not terrible. It's more of a low air push sound versus that high pitch sound that comes from those other miners. So it's not exactly a whole miner like the gold shell box and light series, but if you have a closed off room, basement or garage, noise won't be much of a problem. So one of the things that discourage people is the power drawer of crypto miners. This blue miner only pulls around 420 watts and can be run on your standard home 110 volt electrical outlet. So what does this mean? It means less energy, cheaper electric, which equal more profit. And we all like the sound of that. Also, this blue miner can hash up to around 600 mega hash per second, making it pretty powerful. Puts it in between the jazz miners and the iPolo's respective miners. But the one thing it has that those other guys don't, except for the iPolo V1, which is a complete different topic for another time, is that it comes with a six gig memory chip, meaning you can technically keep mining this machine until 2031. The chip that holds the DAG file is important because most of the manufacturers are only using five gig memory chips, which will technically last until 2028. And that's only if you're mining ETC. Others are even short at times. So it only gives you up to five years until your miner becomes a useless paperweight. All right, let's get into the details. So as you can see in the front of the miner, you have your intake grill. You also have your power cable and you have your ethernet port. Now, they also included an HDMI port, which is kind of interesting. We thought it was nice, but we were told it's not for a monitor. It's an engineering port as per the manufacturer, whatever that means. So as I turn around, you can see it has a sticker that shows the model number and the serial number. And we go around, this is blank. And then we're over here where you see the front grill, which covers the radiator. So the cooling is where the magic happens. So behind these two grills, there's a radiator. And behind the radiator, there's two fans. Their sole purpose of the fans is to take the incoming cooled air and push it onto the radiator. Now you have two pumps, and each pump covers each chip. So as the chips get warm, the pump pulls out the hot water and it brings it into the radiator. Now the radiator has two zones. You have the hot zone and the cold zone on the bottom. So as the deionized water moves through, it goes to the hot zone and it starts cooling down. Then it gets to the cold zone and it's already cool. So now by the time it pops back out, it's going back into the chip, nice and cool, which in turn cools down the chip. So now that you know about the cooling, the network and the power, let's turn this puppy on and see what it can do. So as it starts up, I'm gonna come over here to the laptop and switch over to the mining software. 
So we gotta give it a couple seconds to do its thing. So while that's happening, let me explain about the PDU. Immediate PDU will show you your incoming voltage, which at this time it is 118, and the amps that the machine is taking, which at this point it's 0.80. It'll start to go up once it starts hashing. Now, one of the good things about this miner is that it'll boot up in around two minutes. This is important because other ET hash miners can take up to 30 minutes to start hashing. And time is money. So if you have 10, 20, 100 of these miners, 30 minutes is a long time to wait before you start hashing and making money. So with this miner, like I said before, it'll start hashing in around two minutes. Let's refresh this to see where we're at. Okay, still hasn't started. I'll keep hitting refresh and you will see what's happening. There we go. So it just started hashing. Right now it's at 268. And you'll start seeing it'll start climbing little by little until it gets to its full hash rate. And as it does, there we go. Now we're at 640, all right? These chips are rated at 600. So you're getting a little bit more, it ramps up. And now you see that you're at 3.7879 amps because it's already hashing. Now, this PDU is connected to a 110 output. So we're getting about 117, 115 from this output. If it was connected to a 240 amp outlet, you would probably use somewhere around two amps. So talking about the noise level, as you can see over here, I have a phone with a DV meter on there. And as I'm talking, I have to talk a little louder because the miner is on. You can see we're somewhere in the 80s, in the 80s as far as the DV reading goes. So I'm gonna be quiet for a couple seconds. And I'm gonna turn the miner around so that you can see where the DB rating is. So as you can see, the noise level of this miner is somewhere around 75 dB. Which, once again, not terrible, um, because it's not that high pitch that you hear from other miners. Now that the miner has been running for a few minutes, let's take a look at the dashboard. So I'm just gonna hit refresh. So you can see what's happening. So as you can see, the hash rate went down a little bit. It's down to 560 mega hash. It's been running for about nine minutes now. And um, I like the dashboard. It's pretty simple, nicely laid out. Uh, the, my only complaint, and we already sent an email to the manufacturer, is that when you do uh, click on English, Everything turns to English, exception of the graphs. So we need these Chinese letters to turn into English letters so we understand what they are. But we have Google Translate, so we figured out what it is. And this is your total computing power by the minute, your hash rate curve by the minute, and your temperature curve by the minute. So if you take a look at the graphs, the one thing I love about this miner is that you'll see these lines are practically steady and straight, which means that the cooling is doing exactly what it was designed to do. When you go to other miners' dashboards, you notice that they have this curve to them. None of them are solid lines. These are complete solid lines. You can see up here when it first booted up, it went all the way up, and then it's settling into its, you know, to its groove over there. But as you can see, the line is very solid, and I like that about this miner a lot. So now that we looked at the dashboard, let's look at the amount of heat that this miner is pushing out. So, on the miner itself, it's saying the internal workings of the miner are somewhere around, what does it say, around 40 or so degrees Celsius, which translates to about 104, 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the miner around and my partner over there is gonna shoot it with a temperature sensor to see what's going on. So the top half, he's gonna shoot, and he's telling me it is? 99.1. 99.1 degrees. All right, so now he's gonna shoot the bottom part. 
96.9, 97.9. Okay, so right there we got a two degree difference, which in electronics, that's all a big difference. So thank you for shooting that for us. So the next thing I'm gonna tell you is the amount of air that it's pushing out, basically nothing. And it's not that hot. I'm putting my hands here and not hot at all. So that's a good thing, especially if it's gonna be inside of a room you know, in the house or something like that, it's not going to make any difference at all to the heat of the room. So, in closing, the Blue Miner shows a lot of promise. And whenever we do get out of this slump, all right, I think it'll prove to be pretty profitable. But as you know, once the coins start going, you know, starting their upward turn, the prices of old miners will start to go up as well. So if you want some good deals on miners, now is the time. Do your research, and if it makes sense to you, hit us up. We're here for you. Remember, I'm Steve from Wolf Access, your access to the world of crypto mining.